Welcome back. It's been five long years since you visited Bobby Helicrafter's shack. Come on in, let me give you a little tour. I've probably been collecting Helicrafter gear for 20 years. When I was 16, I was doing paper wraps, and I was doing mowing lawns and everything, and a gentleman friend down the street was a ham radio guy, and he had that SR-150. And the moment I saw it, I just fell in love with it, and I didn't even have my radio license. I was always impressed with him talking on the radio and the radio life. So I decided when I got into radios, I was gonna pick one product to try to collect that and keep that memory of that product. This is an HT30. It's a very rare uh, first sideband radio ever produced by Helicrafters. I found this one and all the tubes in it were made by Helicrafters, so that tells me it hadn't got very many hours on it. I actually have another donor cabinet at my shop that I'm going to replace a couple of the knobs that are missing. Okay, this is another rare piece. This is a Helicrafters HC100. It's a two meter handheld. Uh, it's a little bit bulkier than they have today, but it's a nice piece and I use it and take it to swap meets. This is the SX-115, great sideband rig. It's right up there with the best of the receivers of that era. Here's another radio I haven't seen very often. It's an S-51. Looks like the baby brother to the SX-42. Everybody asks me how do I find stuff. I, I watch eBay quite often and I do look on QRZ. A lot of word of mouth from friends that have, uh, that, well, that actually know that I'm a big collector of Helicrafter gear has been a big help. I mean, I get phone calls and emails from all over the country saying, hey, I have a such and such radio, and you, you would, be, would you be interested in it? So anyway, I found this on eBay. It came, it was in really, really poor shape. In fact, this A was broken. A gentleman down in Stockton reworked it and then I had this uh, put on it as, as it would look in the book. I really believe it was, at the time, this was just one single Helicrafter sign, but they did make them with the triangle around them also. I switch in and out receivers all the time. Sometimes I'll, I'll run one for six or seven months and then I'll go back to a different receiver. But this is a SX-28A and this is the SX-28. This is an SX-11. Over here we have the SX-12, which was a commercial model of the same unit. They're practically in the same chassis and everything. This just has one extra band on it, I believe. This is a S-22R Skyrider Marine, and this is the later model, and then I have the earlier model, the S-22 Skyrider Marine, right here. In the 1940s, 48, I believe it was, Helicrafters did a de-expedition in Africa, and uh, these are some of the original photos taken. The de-expedition was called Mountain to the Moons. This is where they were setting up, getting ready to go up to the expedition site. This is the S20R Sky Champion. It was manufactured from 1939 to 1945. This was really a good seller for Helicrafters. There's many of them out there. And this is the optional meter, which you don't see too often, it's the SM20. This is an antenna rotor control that was manufactured by Allied Industries and Helicrafter put their name on it. The rotor was able to do a 360 degree turn and not stop. That was pretty interesting. And over here we have a Helicrafter's H2M1000. Uh, it's a two meter base station. I believe there's only five or six of them that I know of existing. So it's kind of a rare piece. I do use it on Simplex. And here we have the disaster series of the Helicrafters. I kind of grew up in this era. I was always a transceiver guy. And uh, only, I'd say the last 10 to 15 years, 20 years, I really started working more with um, transmitter receiver separate so that was a little bit of a learning curve for me but I managed to figure it out first we have this is a hurricane this is an SR2000 
This is the Tornado, which is the SR500. Over here we have the Cyclone, which is the SR400. And we have the pair of the HT44 with the SX117 with the Loudon Boomer HT45 amplifier. I have them all on a rotary switch, so I rotate and I'll use different radios at different times. Some people might be asking, what's this radio doing in this collection? It's actually a Collins R388, but it was manufactured by Helicrafters. Serial numbers 1 through 812 were manufactured by Helicrafters. This is all the literature and books on it. And this serial number happens to be 710. And if you could see on the top of the case, it actually has the Helicrafters logo saying built for Signal Corp. This is the Helicrafter R649 uh, UR. It was uh, made, I believe, for the Treasury Department to be given out to the U.S. Coast Guard. It's in very pristine shape and it works really well. This is really cool. This is a military antenna with a built-in tuner. And it has the antenna here, which is all portable for in the field. And you just dial, uh, has a tuning coil right inside of it. This is really ahead of its time. This is an SX-9, and I have another SX-9 over there, but I believe this is a prototype SX-9. It was one of the very first and over here we have the regular SX-9. This is the later model. They actually had an earlier model, and the way you tell them apart is they had a little silk-screened Helicrafter emblem on the upper right corner, which this one does not have. But I'm looking. I'm always looking. This is the 5T collection that I have. This is the one with the boy on it, which very, very limited production on. Here we have the uh, regular 5T that was for sale. Both of them are working condition. The 5T was first introduced as the Sky Buddy and they probably called it the Sky Buddy because of the boy on the dial. Maybe it cost too much to produce it with the boy on the dial or something, but very limited. This was the last of the Sky Buddies right here. There's very few of these. There's actually another one out there, an earlier one I believe, that has another slide switch here versus the toggle switch. But these were the last of the Sky Buddies. This is a Helicrafter S7. It would have come originally with wood knobs. This is actually a combination of two radios that I've kind of put together. I still need the wooden knobs. It does tune in on the broadcast bands, but we've just had some real problems with the coils in this rig. This is the Sky Ranger S39. I got this at a swap meet in De Anza College, and the gentleman had looked me up and said, I have a radio for you. I think he was one of the original owners of it. Okay, this is my uh, SX-88, and uh, this is the SX-23, the Skyrider, the S-76, which is a kind of a rare rig too. Over here we have the Super Defiant, the SX-25. I have it receiving for the HT9. This is the later model of the HT9. There's a black one out there that would be the earlier model and I'd like to find one. Here we have an HT6 transmitter, 25 watt transmitter. I have this set up for 10 meters AM and I'm believe it or not I'm using it with this uh, SX101. This is a pretty rare piece. It's an HT20. You don't see very many of these because not too many people want to lift them up. I'm thinking it weighs close to 150 pounds. It's a very heavy piece. I have this set up on 40 meters and I'm using it with the SX42 for receiving. Here we have an R12 cabinet speaker made by Helicrafters and over here we have an R8. This one came a little bit blemished on the front, a little dirty, but I kept it the way it was because I know it was the original finish on it. The R12 I've had repainted, but as far as the um, R8, I decided to keep it the way it was. This is my BC610i, which I purchased from a friend of mine in Monterey, W6RXK, and myself went down and loaded it up in a trailer. It was quite the uh, job getting it home. I have one just like it, but it was an HT4i that's in my shop outside, which I'm gonna work on and get it up and running and probably sell this one and you know keep the HT4. 
This is the speed champ for it. The story behind this sign here was it was a glass display sign. It didn't have the stand that it's on or the LED lighting. So I had a cabinet guy build me this piece of walnut and we cut a groove and we put a little row of LED lights on it so it stands up and I think it displays real nice. But it was just a piece of glass with their advertisement on it. Last time we spoke, I was talking about my Skymaster and I was a little concerned that maybe it was a one-off that somebody had taken the Skymaster chassis and put it in a nice cabinet. But since uh, the last time we did a video, I did have a gentleman in, I believe it was Ohio, that actually drove, I think he told me he drove 200 miles and bought the exact same radio, sent me pictures, and it was the identical radio with the exact label. That was what was one of the benefits of going through electric radio and having the picture on there, because somebody actually saw it in electric radio and said, hey, I have that exact radio. So it was nice to learn that it was actually produced by Helicrafters and more than one was produced. That's a beautiful sound, huh? <laughs> I feel that every Helicrafter radio is unique in its own way. I think that the craftsmanship is, they're like a work of art. Each piece is like a work of art. And to produce something and mass produce it in the manner that they did is phenomenal. Yeah, people come in and they go, my goodness, this is a lot of money, but I never even really look at it that way. I look at it as something that I really enjoy and is a passion, and I think everybody needs a passion in life. I love the camaraderie of going to swap meets and purchasing a radio and being excited about plugging it in for the first time and hearing it, and I've always liked switching out radios and playing with different radios so the hobby stays alive. Hello CQ, 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 here is Whiskey 6, Oscar, Zulu, India. Whiskey 6, Oscar, Zulu, India. I do like to work as many countries as I can. I think I'm up to like 280 countries right now. I enjoy working long distance. I like to tell them I'm on the Helicrafter Disaster Series radio when I talk to them. You always need more space. If you start collecting helicopters, you definitely are going to need more space.